geriatric pregnancy? Seriously? Is that really what doctors call it? I'm Dr. Marta Perez and welcome back. Today's episode is going to be all about advanced maternal age or pregnancy over the age of 35. Let's get started. I don't even know where the origins of the term geriatric pregnancy were. They're probably just some old definition. I couldn't even find online where the term came from. It's probably still in some old coding things. I've seen people bring it to me and say, it says geriatric pregnancy. But in general, this is something that is a term that is not used. Instead, we use the term advanced maternal age to describe pregnancies over the age of 35. Sometimes more specifically, it's deliveries over the age of 35. So someone may be 34 during their pregnancy. And then also sometimes you'll hear the term very advanced maternal age, which means age 40 and above. But in general, we just say AMA or advanced maternal age to describe pregnancies over 35. And why do we make this distinction? There's not a huge difference between a pregnancy at age 34 and a pregnancy at age 36, but there are some special considerations that as age goes on in life, pregnancies do have some increased risks of complications. So a cutoff point was chosen of age 35 that comparison groups are used. It's really important to talk about and to educate about advanced maternal age because increasingly in our country and other developed countries, the amount of women who are delaying childbearing until the mid to late 30s is increasing over time. So to give some statistics, compared to 2000, the year 2000, the number of pregnancies at age 35 or above in 2014 was 23% higher. And that was a rate of 9%, which is really common. That's about one out of 10 pregnancies being in women above age 35. There's a lot of reasons for this delay. We have a visitor. Move towards a delay in childbearing. Part of it is good reliable contraception, an increase in maternal education levels, a delay in the time of marriage, and of course, increasing success of assisted reproductive technologies or fertility treatments. Some of what I'm gonna cover are things that sound scary or increase risk of pregnancies over, of advanced maternal age over age 35, but please stay tuned to the end because I, I wanna end on a note that's important. All right, we're gonna talk about three different things. One is age-related decline in fertility. The second is advanced maternal age and early pregnancy complications. And then the third is advanced maternal age and late pregnancy complications. Age-related decline in fertility is just a fact of life. As people who have ovaries, the most eggs we have in our lifetime is actually when we're fetuses. Ever since that time, the amount of eggs and the quality of eggs go down in the ovaries. And with age, we see the biggest decline in fertility in the mid to late 30s. I'm gonna to refer to some of our fertility experts, like my friend, Dr. Natalie Crawford, who has excellent videos about that because I can make a whole video about that, but we're not going to. Advanced maternal age and early pregnancy concerns. As oocytes reach a higher age above 35, there's decreasing oocyte quality, meaning the processes that oocytes or eggs go through to get ready to be released can sometimes go wrong in their amount of chromosomes. So the amount of genetic problems related to chromosome number goes up with increasing maternal age. You often hear about trisomies. That means when one of the types of chromosomes has three copies. There's also monosomies, which means only one type. Some of these chromosomal anomalies are what we screen for early in pregnancy. We used to only have invasive diagnostic testing in order to look for these chromosomal abnormalities, but now we have so many more options for screening. So actually women of all ages can get first trimester genetic screening and there's different types. I could do a whole video on genetic screening tests. Please comment below if you're interested in that. So I will move it up kind of in my queue, but it is something that's pretty confusing. I have posts about it on my Instagram. You can check that out. The other thing to think about is the rates of miscarriage and that these two things are related because most miscarriage and early pregnancy loss is because of genetic and chromosomal abnormalities. At age less than 30, the rate of miscarriage is about 12%. At age 30 to 34, the risk of miscarriage is about 15%. At age 35 to age 40, the risk of miscarriage is about 25%. And at age 40 and above, the risk of miscarriage is up to 50%. So you really see how those eggs and oocytes 
decrease in quality leading to miscarriage. Advanced maternal age and the rest of pregnancy or late pregnancy. As I mentioned before, we use 35 as a definition cutoff, but it's not that there's an abrupt change in these types of complications of pregnancy and delivery at age 35. It's that as our bodies age, the likelihood of developing chronic medical conditions or other medical conditions and the way our bodies work in pregnancy just changes gradually over time. Things that affect obstetrical outcomes in advanced maternal age involve other chronic medical conditions. So as we age, we have a higher likelihood of developing high blood pressure or diabetes or other medical problems or worsening medical problems. There's also some increased risk of non-genetic congenital malformations. Depending on how you define the congenital malformation to study it, the rates in the general population, so everyone, is about one to 3%. And the rates in advanced maternal age tend to be more at that 3% range. There's also an increased risk of stillbirth of it with advanced maternal age, but the risk is still much less than 1%. So that's gonna be a very small increase in risk. Other obstetrical complications that are actually pretty common in pregnancy also increase how common they are in the advanced maternal age age group. These are things like high blood pressure disorders of pregnancy, such as preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and things like that. So those things are already pretty common in pregnancy. They're the really common disorders of pregnancy, and they're gonna be just a little bit higher in that advanced maternal age age group. Finally, the other thing to talk about is that for not very well-defined or not really truly scientifically known biological reasons, we see throughout a whole person's reproductive lifespan from teen pregnancies through young adult pregnancies and older adult pregnancies, an increasing rate of needing C-section for delivery and like decreasing vaginal delivery rate. I don't fully know why this is, but we should all biologically, I guess, with our uterus be having babies as teenagers and people in our young 20s, but that's just not realistic for modern life. What is my recommendation if you are planning to have a pregnancy over the age of 35? The first thing is before pregnancy, get all your preventative care and preventative workup. Make sure you're fully up to date on all of your health screenings. If you have any medical conditions, make sure they're in a really good spot of good control. Changing those things before entering pregnancy will absolutely increase the health of the pregnancy while in the pregnancy. The next thing is to set expectations. So I know I just discussed all this stuff that's higher risk, and I don't do that to freak you out. I do that to help give you better control. So just knowing what the expectations are, I, I hope is not to induce anxiety, but to make you feel empowered. And the third thing is know who your team is. A lot of OB, general OBGYNs will manage a pregnancy above age 35. It's not high risk enough that it requires a maternal fetal medicine specialist. However, in some practice locations, depending on how they manage patients and what their relationship is with their high risk OB colleagues, they may ask for a consult or two going over, you know, chromosomal screening, genetic screening more in depth or doing the anatomy scan because of the small increased risk of congenital malformations. So just talking to your OB about who will my team be. Okay, so I just went over a lot of complications and things that sounded really negative about pregnancies over the age of 35. But this is the note I wanna end on. Most pregnancies over the age of 35 are healthy and go well, okay? I really wanna stress that. It's important to know that you know things that are common might be a little bit more common or things that are rare might be a little more likely, but they're still rare. But I wanna empower you to know that most pregnancies are gonna be happy, healthy pregnancies. Plus, we can't really do a big research study noting the very real benefits of the fact that a person waited for the right supportive relationship, attained all of the education that they were trying to attain, are in a better financial stability place in their lives, and the benefits that those things confer not only to pregnancy, but also to parenting are huge, and they can't really be captured in a research study. That's just the way society is going now. So those things are really important to the health of yourself and your family as well. And they are probably more important than just the number and just these small increased risks that are associated with pregnancy when our bodies are just a little bit older. So I want you to remember that. There's a reason you are where you are now and you're making the decisions that you're making. I want you to feel empowered by information, but not overly concerned about me listing off a bunch of risks. I want you to feel good and empowered. I'm super grateful for our 
fertility and reproductive endocrinology and infertility doctors who make pregnancies at ages when fertility are declining more possible. I think that's incredibly empowering and I hope that even more people have access to that. So that is my spiel on advanced maternal age and pregnancy. As always, I would love to see your comments down below or any questions you have. And I hope you join me again next week. I love educating and I love empowering. Bye guys. Take care.